What's up, Visual fans? Welcome back to Trash Talk. Back with me, Rocky Padilla, and I am back in Jakarta, Indonesia. The yes. grind don't stop. Yes, <laughs> we are we are going straight to work right yes, now, sir. and I am here with the Indonesian national team skill uh, skill development coach, Coach Tyler Farias, My aka T Free. <laughs> oh, Rocky, pleasure, brother. Pleasure. Thank brother. you so much, though, for stopping yes, by, and of yes, course. Sir. Thank you for the share. Oh, come on, and you know, hold on, let me you know, we got a movement coming soon. You know, be on the lookout for it. You know, this is oh, one of the first yeah. drop. Don't be rude. You know, movement coming soon. Too, yeah, you know, be on the lookout. Appreciate the love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate you about this though, about the oh, shirt, man. Always, always We're gonna rock that for sure. Yes, sir, Rocky. Yes, sir. I know you guys are busy right now yes, with the Indonesian Patriots. You guys might go to Vegas in two weeks, yes, and but before we get to the fun stuff about basketball, we gotta. Get to know you first, oh, man. man. Come on now. We gotta get personal. You ready? I love it, man. You know what? You know, I'm ready for anything, man. Let me know. <laughs> all right. So, man, um, as we all know, you are part of Impact Basketball. Shout out to Joe Abu Nazar. Oh, Joe, we're gonna start your Impact. Love, love, love. Yes, yes sir. Oh, but hey, what? Why did you become? What did you decide to become a development coach, a skill development coach, and how did you end up at Impact Basketball? Um. So you know, I always wanna, you know. Loving the game of basketball. My dream was like to coach basketball. But um, after college and I uh, took my internship at Impact, um, I fell in love with the developing side more than actually like the coaching X's and O's. So, you know, I got a chance to work with many NBA players, you know, some of the best trainers, shout out uh, Andrew Moore, Tim Reinhardt, some of the guys I learned from, Joe especially. But, you know, I kind of like that behind the scenes, like down and dirty type of work, oh. you know, the stuff that's not seen. So I fell in love with that. And then, you know, I started to get my feet underneath me and then just moved up the ranks at Impact. And then um, to come out here, you know, it was like pandemic, you know, kind of messed up everything for me. So it's kind of like I was like in between, you know, I was just working like a regular job, working with like local kids. Oh. And then the opportunity came back, you know, to... Um, get back with Impact Basketball, like, full-time. So, and, you know, it was right before my birthday, you know, I made, like, a decision. I was kind of like, yo, let's just do it, you know? Like, let's, let's go on a journey. <laughs> That's crazy. Though, but, yeah, you just talk about you working with a lot of NBA players, like your best friend, Kyle O'Quinn, yes. and, of course, uh, Kyle Lowry as well. Yeah. And they got, like, I mean, the summer is so much fun, though, in Vegas, you know? Oh, yeah. Summer yeah. league, players coming in for yeah, workout. Yeah, for sure. You guys yeah. had, like, Tyrese Halliburton. You guys oh, yeah, had yeah. Zaire Williams. Yeah. The young guns. Yeah, and you living that life, man. You live, you living all that yeah, life yeah, to yeah. come out here. Like, how tough was that decision, though? You no, know, it it wasn't too tough, honestly, because you know it was a chance for me to get back into what I love to do. You know, and I think when you're doing what you love, like life is good. You know, so you know I've been working just at a you know hospital for a couple of years. You know, pandemic. Obviously, wow. I was talking about you know, and training was just on the side a little bit. So. Once I, like, put that, you know, I it taken away, it really opened me to, like, what I do love to do, and that's being in the game of basketball. So, um, you know, no family, no kids. It kind of was easy. It's like I talked to a lot of people, and no one, like, this is a once-in-a-lifetime type of experience. Like, life's all about journeys and travels and stories, you know, and if you're able to have those, I think you've lived a good life. So, for me, I've kind of always been, like, you know, let's just do it, you know, like, and then if it don't work out, okay, but at least I tried. Yeah. You know, so that's a good reason, though. I mean, like we only live once, right? Only live so once. we have we have to travel. We have you know experience things for sure that for we sure. haven't experienced before. Oh, you know, sure. yeah. You don't want to live with that "what if" yeah. question. Too many of those. Everybody gets those, but a lot of "what ifs." Like ah, you know, we don't want to have those. Yeah. But in the, in your first few months, you had Coach Brandon Walker, right? Yes, sir. Shout out to shout out to B Walker doing his thing out there in India with Impact. Yes, sir. I know. His, he was, like, in India right away. I'm like, what? He's a guy again, getting right to the grind. The grind don't stop, just like we said. And you're still, like, 9,000 miles away from, from Vegas right now. And I am not sure how many friends you got out here other than Joyo and Fahri. <laughs> Fahri. Shout out to Fahri, man. He's, uh, he's, he's my brother now, man. He's helped me out a lot here. Helps me with everything day to day, you know. So, nah, he's definitely huge. And, yeah, I mean, I met a couple friends out here, you know. Through some players and stuff like that, and so it's been good though. You know? But did you ever get? Did you ever feel homesick though? Um, probably like after the first, uh, maybe after like two or three months. You know, we're so busy with the team. It's like 
It was so like, you know, two a days, five days a week, you're going, going back and forth. But one thing is I'm used to being like alone, like away from family. Oh. So, you know, I haven't lived near like my parents and stuff like that in 10 years, like living in the same state. So that kind of adjustment is just, it's been okay because I'm just further now. Like I've always been away. <laughs> yeah. So now it's just a little further. So yeah, I got me a little bit, you know, you miss the everybody, you know, nephews, cousins and stuff like that. But at the same time, you know, communication is big. So, you know. But there's no big adjustment for you, like man, even mentally, like. Oh, huge mental, huge okay. mentally, you know. Um, you know, but just through the journey of life, you know, used to being by myself and, you know, those type of things build you for times like this, you know. But, you know, there's an objective to be done, you know, and, you know, work is obviously huge here. So, but I'm very good at balancing. So, you know, like I'm good loner, I would say. Like, I don't mean much. You know, I talk to my people, I'm good. But I can be by myself for a little bit, you know? Oh, man, that's tough, though. I mean, like, we really appreciate you, though, you know, sure. for your bravery and everything to come to Indonesia yeah. and, you know, uh, help our national team, especially, most importantly. Yeah. But before we go to the basketball question, I would like to know, like, what makes you happy, though, in Jakarta, Indonesia? What makes me happy? Mm -hmm. Oof. Um, let's see. Sate, first of all. <laughs> Give me some saute and long tongue. <laughs> Your boy is good for the night. I love, yeah, it's amazing food. But honestly, you know, um, you know the, the culture and, you know, just the new experience. You know, every day is, like, kind of new, and it's a challenge. And, you know, Jakarta, you know, they offer almost everything I can want compared to back home, you know. Like, it's been easy to find, easy transition food, you know. Language bear, obviously, is, you know, it's not... Super easy, but you know you get you get a little bahasa, you know, slamet si young, you know, you so, you know, I know a couple of things, but you know, honestly, you know, I'm just chill, man. You know, Jakarta's got everything you need. You know, work. You go to a restaurant. You know, you go to a nice little nightlife if you want to go out, step out. But I'm a simple man now. I'm in my mature stage of life. You know, so you don't need to go to Kaspar. No, 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 no. I ain't been there a lot. I ain't been there a lot. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. I'm just joking about that. Nah, I'm not serious about that. But do you have a specific, uh, specific routine though every day in Jakarta? Um, mostly, I try to get. Um, I work out before practice. I think start my day with a workout. You know, just mentally sharpen your mind, get a little burn, a little sweat in. You know, always makes for a better day, more energy. You're productive. And then we got practice. Come back. Grains of Glory, my go-to lunch spot. <laughs> yeah, shout you. out, shout out, Grains of Glory. Thank you for the smoothies. Oh yeah. yes, smoothies. every <laughs> hey, check them out if you ain't know about them. Great food, great everything. Um, come back, either nap or make a couple calls home, depending on the time difference, and then right back to work. So it's kind of like the same routine. They come back, chill, maybe enjoy a nice glass of red wine to cool the night down. But that's classy. You know, yeah, that's yeah. classy. I like yeah, that. I like to stay classy, mature a little bit. You know. But one routine that you have to do every day, though. One routine I have to do every day? Oh, man. Dang. <laughs> you got I, I mean... I, coffee? I, I, like, I, I have to do coffee every day. You know, yeah. when, it, when it comes to working, I need a black... I need a, either Americano iced or a black cold brew to start my day. You got a, sure. you got a spot to go to? You got, well, what's the to-go spot for you? Uh, the... Common Grounds. That's uh, that's for Mark Bloom, Bloom in uh, Ashta, I believe third level. Okay. Great coffee, great matcha latte as well. Oh, I but when, that. yeah, yeah. But when I go to when I go to a good spot, I want something good. I go to Bloom. But anywhere that gives me a nice americano ice and stuff like that. We just went to Nitro yesterday. It's kind of over here. Okay. Also fire. Shout out to them. <laughs> but the good food, good coffee, everything. Okay, that's the okay now. It's time to talk about basketball. Let's this do it. Let's do it. That's why yeah. we're here, right? Yeah. I mean, like, my DM, just I, I told you, is blowing up right now because Milwaukee Bucks just posted about Marquis Bolden signing with them. Joe Yo is getting ready. I heard he's really healthy right now, you know, and he's in shape to go, you know, compete with Brooke Lopez, with, you know, Bobby Portis, Cersei Bucca, Giannis. But they don't, you know, there's definitely a roster spot for him. You know, he's young, talented, healthy. You know, I think it's probably one of the healthiest He's been in a while, he's coming off a great Asia Cup, uh, you know, you know, he's been shooting the ball well, been producing, you know, I talk to him like every week, so, you know, I think he's ready to go in there and, you know, yeah, we're make all that roster. Excited. Yeah, man, we are, we are all very excited, all the Indonesian basketball fans, but what do you think that Marcus needs to do to make that roster? Man, you know, <laughs> he's done, you know, he has everything that he needs to make it, you know, and... um. 
as long as he shoots that ball well, he plays the defense, you know, and does things like that. I think after that, you know, it's out of his hands, you know. You know, some, you know, the NBA is a business at the end of the day as well, and it gets political. You might have the right assets and tools, but, you know, if they like, you know, it could get a little shaky after that. But, you know, I think he's prepared. You know, his talent is, you know, definitely NBA-worthy roster-wise, you know. And so I think this is his year to finally, you know, show the world, continue to show the world because he's already done it out here. But to show him why he belongs to the NBA, I feel this is the year too, man. For him, man. I'm, it, man. Yeah, I'm really felt. Good. Yeah, I'm very confident, confident about that too. And of course, good luck to Marquis yes, with the sure. Bucks. No we worries. yes, we're gonna watch you from Indonesia, and of course, there is our boy DMX. You know, who is working really hard at GCU. Uh, you also worked with him closely before he left for the states. Sure. Um, what stood out, though, about DMX and how fast do you think he can compete in Division One basketball? I mean, he's ready. Um, he's just a dog, man. He's got that mentality that needs to be kind of spread out here in the Indo. He just, he's a fighter. Nobody bullies him. Nobody does nothing. And he just, he plays, you know, 100% at all times when he's on the court. You know, but, you know, I think, you know, with his size, athleticism, I think just understanding the game, you know, I think that's what GCU will bring to him is understanding the game, slowing up his pace, you know, being patient. I think that's, you know, going to be huge for his development out there. But he's definitely impactful and ready, you know, ready to make plays out there for sure. Yeah, man. We are all excited, too. I mean, like probably like one more month before the season oh, starts. Yeah, sure. You know, all, Indone- all the Indonesian basketball fans will be asking, like, where can we watch him? Where's the live stream? <laughs> we, we, we'll find that stream for you. We'll get it, even if it's illegal. You know what I mean? <laughs> we'll find it for you guys. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. That's bad. That's a bad. But, Coach, you and Coach Brandon came here in April, right? Yep, April. Yeah, early April. And you just told me about the story that actually you knew our national team manager, Jeremy, beforehand. Oh, yes, yes. Can you tell us about the story first before we go into the next question? Yes, young Jeremy was <laughs> once one of my players. Um, my intern year at Impact, he was uh, uh, doing post-grad over there. Okay. So he was one of my players. So the relationship between me and him has been a long one. So uh, it's good to get like reconnect. You know, The game of basketball brings people you know, crazy. back together sometimes. You know, and you, Who would have thought the world's so big but yet so small? You know. crazy. Did you ever imagine though reconnecting with him? I, I don't sometimes. Like I'd be like, it's really crazy. Like you know, that was nine, eight years ago. So it's like, you know, we talk. You know, you see people on social media, but to be back working in a different um, avenue now. You know what I'm saying? Now he's my boss. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> in a sense, so it's cool. But how good was Jeremy though as a player? Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy had that dog mentality in him too. I can hold you. He was tough, aggressive, you know. He was he was he could be considered somewhat of a sniper off the catch and shoot. Oh, wow. You know, he had a little, you know, he improved himself. He's like there. Clay Thompson? Yeah. He, you know, no, 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 no. We can't give him that much praise. We can't give him that much praise. But you know, if I had to resemble his game, he'd be like a PJ Tucker. Oh, you know, hit the okay. open three and then Corner. defensive okay. three, the okay. defensive. Always aggressive, always you know active. So yeah, I, I could see Jeremy. I had to give him a PJ yeah, comparison I could sure. see Jeremy as a PJ Tiger. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. Yeah, sure. but but like, let's go back to you and Coach Brandon Walker again. You guys arrived in April. You got one month working with the team before the Sea Games, mm-hmm. and they cannot miss from the three point line in the Sea Games. Man, I don't even know how the percentage. I'm I, I'm pretty sure it's above 45, 47 percent probably, and they made history by winning the gold medal. What do you guys do though? In the first month, and how did you guys able to help the players, you know, to shoot that well that fast? You know, I think it's, um, you know, it's, men- it's mentality and also, you know, repetition for sure. But, you know, bringing something different, you know, changing, you know, making them feel uncomfortable, okay. making them, you know, accountable, making them, you know, not settle for less. I have a very high standard when I train, you know, and if I catch you slacking, I'm going to be on you. But it's not to punish you or anything like that but it's to raise you to where you know standard. to a standard yeah. you know and the standard it has to be raised risen to get the result and obviously we raised it in that good month and it produced you know what i'm saying so i hope that catches on with obviously the national team but as in the culture of indo basketball the ibl we're able to jump up and get you know more talented players and maybe get indo players outside of indo Hopefully, man. Hopefully, we're going to get more players like Brandon, right? Like Brandon Jawado. Sure. He's Jawado, playing in Japan. Sure. Yeah. Yo, crazy story. Jawado is actually playing 
Kyle with Kyle with Kyle O'Quinn. See how basketball brings it back together, you know? Wow. I just met Joao in April and now he's playing with my best friend. Basketball's crazy. Basketball is really crazy. And yeah, I'll forget what the okay. <laughs> That's the question I'm gonna ask you. Um of course you just uh you've been here for a while now, you've seen a lot of practice, uh you train a lot of players. What is the biggest difference in training or practice? between America and Indonesia because I think in Indonesia sometimes it gets too quiet. Oh Nobody is talking. <laughs> you you think, oh my goodness, some t- I you know I I praise and beg my guys to be different, mm-hmm. you know? Stand out, you know, be it's okay to fail. Yeah. You know, if you never fail, you'll never learn. You know, failures where you learn the most about yourself. It was where you grow. Mm-hmm. But they're scared to even try to fail. So it's like Be different. It's okay. Like, you know, you don't have to follow the same cloth, yeah. you know. Be cut from a different one. And, yeah, I preach to them, count, you know. Yeah. What are we doing? Call the ball screens, you know. Because that's a part of basketball. I don't know why, they, you know, it's not not part of it. Like, you go to any level, yeah. Division three, Division two, Even NBA, pro, Euro leagues, high school. Yeah. The emphasis is talking because yeah. we have to be, as one team, be on the same page. We're not calling out screens. We're not helping each other. We're not motivating each other. You know, it's where people can get lost. People get mentally lost in the game. So, you know, I think the talking just got to be louder. <laughs> just more efficient. You don't have to talk the whole time, but, yeah. you know, screen, screen, you know, or, you know, let's go, guys. Let's go motivate it. You know, don't be afraid. You know, I think they're scared. I think they're scared sometimes. <laughs> they're, either they're scared or guys. I got a couple guys who started to get there. Shout out Yuta, Yuta, Yesaya. They always bring pretty good energy, like, throughout practices. So. They, you know, they're a little different for sure. Yeah, I mean, like, either they're scared or they're just shy. I think a little bit of both. You know, okay. and, you know, it's different. You know, it's like you've been doing something your whole life. It's tough to break that cycle, mm-hmm. but that's why I don't stop. You know, every day talk. You know, I'm not gonna not be consistent because what I expect from them, I'm also accountable for myself as well. You know, bringing in every day energy. Man. You know, preaching what practice what I preach. You know, and you know, and vice versa. Now I feel like I need to ask you this then. As a trainer, right, you say you have to bring the energy every day. Yeah. What happened in the bad day? Bad day? Bad day. When bad you don't, you, for you, as a trainer, I mean, like, you got you to gotta have a bad day, right? It's, not, mean, it's, not, know, not, it's, not, it's not a good day every day, right? You know, it's, you, know, it's not, you know, it might not always be a good day, but, you know, it's, the, it's all a mental mindset, you know? Yeah, it is bad days, but, you know, you, when you bring it into the bigger, bigger circle of, You know, if I don't bring it, now I'm letting them down. So, you know, you push stuff to the side sometimes, you know. Yeah, it's not always, you know, sunshine and, you know, good days. But you got to push through. And those are the days that make you tougher and make you better. So definitely way more good days than bad days, for sure. That's good to hear. (laughs) Yeah, you've been here for more than five months now? Yeah, around six months, maybe five, six months. Ooh, six months. Yeah, so fast, huh? Man, yeah, I'll be back. (laughs) <laughs> you know, you get six months, or you get a year. It's, yeah, it's, time's flying, but yeah. having fun, having fun. Yeah, and we're probably gonna see you speak Bahasa more. <laughs> I'm, I want to be fluent. I want to be like sixty percent, be able to understand. We're working on it. We're working on it. Uh, you have seen the team uh, won the gold medal, play at FIBA Asia, mm-hmm. FIBA play in FIBA Asia. But what is something non non negotiable that our national team to improve on in the future? Non negotiable. Non nego like for like the standard of them to have like anything non negotiable. Something that you know something. The 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 um. That needs to be improved. Uh, the com- the uh, the competitive drive. Okay. Yeah, and competitive drive and toughness. Okay. And toughness goes from could be physical, could be the mental part. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, anything like that. It's just being tougher for longer, not expecting. A little, you know, something less. Like, don't be okay with, okay. You know what I mean? Like, we lose. Like, why did we lose? Like, have that, like, fight, that hunger, that we, competitive edge that's, like, losing is not an option. You know what I'm saying? I know that, you know, it's it hasn't been much winning in a sense of, you know, collectively as Indo basketball for competitions. But let's have, like, if we lose, like, let's have some fight, some fire. But, you know, like when we lose and stuff like that. We're getting there. Yeah, we're for sure. Oh, the tide has changed. We got the gold medal. Come on now. This is this is the beginning of, you know, great things for the national team. Hashtag for Indonesian basketball culture. Yes. <laughs> Always for the culture. Yes. And what, what's the, uh, what, how do I say it? What 
bad habits that you've seen a lot during practice? Habits. Yeah. That, that fix. Well, the talking thing we talked on, that's a bad habit, yeah. in my opinion. Now it's one bad, thing. Bad, I, any other bad habits? Bad that, habits. Um, they don't go full speed? Like now, you know what the thing is, though? It's they, you know, they do work so hard, okay. you know? And the, the it's the scared to try things. Okay. They don't want to get yelled at or they think, you know, it's the end of the world. Like, like I say, you know, biggest learning lessons and greatness comes from failures. Okay. You know, you keep losing, you keep losing, you're going to find a way to win. You're going to find a way to be successful. You know, if you don't fail, you're never going to learn. So it's like they hesitate on the try to learning. It's like, I, and they don't commit. Just do it. And if you get yelled at, it's not the end of the world. Right back to it, you know, just learn from it. But they're just scared to make mistakes. Yeah. yeah, like, yo, it's okay. Like, try something new. Don't just be robotics. I, I, I think robotics, sometimes it's very robotic, and, and, you know, with certain things. I and I just want them to, you know, you know, be okay with failing. I think robotics is part of our culture. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's okay. You know, I can, you know, is it, we have to change it, but, you know. It could be, you know, we want to do it sooner than later, but, you know, we're aware of it. So that's the, that's the great thing. And obviously, Marquis, DMX, Jawado, Abraham, they're going to be Hall of Famers oh, in sure. the future. Sure. Um, yeah, and then, of course, I know you love Weedy. Oh, man, Weedy, <laughs> yeah. Weedy time, baby. Yeah. You know what time it is. But tell me the one young player that caught your eyes, other than Weedy, <laughs> and will have the chance to be great in the future. Oh, Yuta, for sure. What do you like about him? Yuta, Yuta, Yuta is so much better than he think he is. Okay. And just like I say, that scared to fail thing is one obstacle he just got to get by because when he understands how good he is mm -hmm. and, you know, with his skill set, his change of speed, he's, you know, he's not, he's a small guard, but he's also strong, you know. He can really be a problem, you know. And once I feel like he knows that about himself, he becomes a better player. Sometimes I don't think he realizes how good he could really be. So, for sure, Yuta, for sure. Um, I think Origi's right there, too. I like him. I like him, man. He's hungry, comes in practice. He's one of the guys that be talking. You know, he's got good size, good shot. Just like them. It's like they have to know that they're good. Like, walk around with that swag a little man, bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to be flaunt and cocky is the difference. Like, just know, like, when that ball's in my hand, like, I'm nice. Like, and so... Those two for sure. Oh, man. I'm trying to think. Those are my guys right there for sure. I Trust me. Shout out to all my guys. You know how it is. It's all love. But yeah. those guys for sure. You know, and, it, it, and it goes with the confidence with all of them. Just knowing that they're good. Like, know that you're good. You're, you know, you're a professional for a reason. Look at all these people in Indo. Like, they try to play basketball and they're not there. So... That that I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with those two for right now. Yeah, I, but I'm a big fan of Yuda though. I'm a big yeah. fan of Yuda. I told everybody that I'm gonna retire doing this if Yuda don't make the national team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad Yuda made the national yeah. team. If not, yeah. I, I won't be doing this with you right now. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, like you say, you have high regards for Weedy. Uh, I saw your interview with Main Basket. Yeah. Um, I love his game too. He did yeah. really well in the IBL playoff with West Bandit Solo. But what do you think though for him? What what's what's the next step for him? You know, to be able to produce in a very high level in the international level. Um, I think you know consistency, okay. and you know it goes back to you know having that confidence of knowing who you are as a okay. player. He's a floor general. He yeah. he got good handle. I told him he's got the best pull up jumper in Indonesia right now. Now I tell him that every day in practice, off the dribble, he's very creative. But it's just that confidence of knowing who you are. Like, you can run a team, but now it's like to voice it. You know, I try to tell him, you know, look at, like, Chris Paul. Like, he reminds me of Chris Paul a little bit with the handles and, you know, everything like that, his pace. Like, but now it has to become, now get the leadership part of Chris Paul. Chris Paul's either directing traffic, reading screens, you know, telling his players what to do. He takes advantage of the misread, you know, defensive cover. So stuff like that. And when he starts to become comfortable doing stuff like that, his, his, you know, he's just going to level up, I believe. Yeah, I think because Pross is getting older right now. So I think Witty is still a sniper. Yeah, he's still a sniper. But, but I think Witty is up next, you know. I, I hope so. I hope so for him. And yeah, what's next? <laughs> I got to read the, my script first. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, of course, uh, us as a basketball fans, 
we don't know what's going on inside the practice. You, yeah. You're good. <laughs> inside the practice, yes. Uh, but I've, I, I've been wondering, you know, how do you work together with the head coach, Coach Milos, mm-hmm. assistant coaches, Coach Ahang, Coach mm-hmm. Chaching? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, how you guys work together, you know, to have the best practice every day? You know, I think, um, I think with this group now, like, it's a, it's a good, um, there's good communication. There's a good wave of communication going along, all coaching staff. Um, I think just being, you know, uh, listening to each other is good. Okay. You know, and then, you know, whatever, you know, Coach Milos uh, wants from us, we just do it at a high level. Okay. So, you know, we just listen, um, you know, we, 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 you know, talk about some certain things and then we just go from there. So I think us being on the same page of the accomplishment and the goals is, you know, one of the big things that we got going for us right now. Okay, that's good to hear. Uh, of course, you guys you just got done traveling to a few cities in Indonesia for the select, to select kids. Yeah, the Slack Kids for the tryout uh, with the Patriots. And now all the players are in Indonesia, uh, you know, trying to f- get a spot to go to Vegas, you know. Yeah, yeah, sure. uh, so what is the plan and goals for this next two weeks before you guys heading to Vegas? Um, you know, just to get them in shape, you know. We, um, you know, when we get to Vegas, it's going to be a higher level of training. Obviously, you know, with the atmosphere changing and, you know, probably the training um, program that we'll put out for them. Um, being there, you know, the facilities better, you know, more – more cords, you know, then work personally with our head strength coach and stuff like that. So um, just getting them in shape, you know, I think so, you know, it's not a long process of having them work to get in shape and then we're not getting better, you know. Like we want to be able to get there, let the jet lag wear off, but then we're going right to work, you know, at full speed. And what is the biggest priority, though, for the Patriots while training in Vegas? It's just um, – obviously getting them better but then you know mentally change changing the way they see training you know them being exposed to a professional setting you know impact has been around for yeah. years for a reason you know so they do the things the right way and just to get a different eye and hopefully bring it back to the culture their friends their teammates you know they bring that type of work ethic or accountability that they've learned and been exposed to they bring it back here and then it just starts spreading when did a facility like impact though out here? For sure, for sure. It's possible, you know. I think, you know, we got the space, we got the, the architecture, we got the, you know, everything we need here. I think, you know, just. Because everybody went crazy though when they saw my video with Derek working out at GCU. Everybody was like, oh my God, that facility is nice. And that facility is really nice, but they got nicer facilities in the States. I'm saying yeah. it's, you know, and you, you just need availability too, yeah. you know, it needs to be something that's. You know, you got to commit to something if you want to see change. So we get a group of people that want to, you know, see this thing work out. You know, it's all part about taking a risk. But I think that would be huge out here to have a facility with four to six full courts and, you know, you know, weight rooms inside, you know, like with proper equipment. So I think that's, you know, I think that's coming. You know, we just once we get these couple more gold medals and start, you know, doing things, I think the. The, the country would be behind the team. Yeah, I think that's important for us just to improve on, I mean, like not just basketball, yeah. you know, any sports. Sure. Uh, you know, if we yeah. get a nice facilities, I think, you know, the sports culture in Indonesia is going to be better in the future also. Sure. Yeah. You got to invest. You got to invest in something if you want to, you know, take it to the next level, I yeah, feel absolutely. like. But the final question, is it worth it to be out here in Indonesia? And what is your dream with our national team? It's definitely worth it. Yeah. First of all, it's an honor to... Yeah be part of a you know another country with welcoming arms mm-hmm. and having the privilege to work you know with a national team you know you know I represent a club represent a whole country so that's just an honor in itself um I definitely have loved it out here you know it's made me a better person you know mentally physically you know all that stuff as a you know player development coach the challenges you know you want to be challenged but we also want to see results as well so um Definitely want to stay with the national team for, you know, as long as we can. You know, um, I'm definitely invested. You know, I don't want to just dip toes in and leave and not see the full potential because we're not there yet. You know, we still have room to grow. We have, you know, a long road ahead of us, but we can get down that road at a higher level, you know, a little faster. What's the dream, though? The dream, we want to, you know, we want to be, you know, first of all, we want to be considered a powerhouse in the Asia community for sure. You know, we want to get up there with the Philippines, the China, the Japans. We don't want to just be looked at the schedule like, oh, this is the easy win. We want, we want other countries to, you know, have a little fear and, you know, a little more preparation for us, you know, instead of 
probably the past being, okay, this one's going to be easy. Or, you know, we won't bring our full roster to Indo. We want them to, you know, have to bring the best of the best so they could, you know, compete with us. And we want to be able to continue to beat them, you know. We beat the Philippines already. We already showed we ran through Asia, some of the Asian countries. So we want that. And then we want to get to, you know, compete against other high-level countries as well, you know. We want the standard to change. We want the culture of, you know, basketball to be high level. We don't want mediocre, you know. So when they think of Indo, it's high level, you know. So that's the dream for it. We trust that our national team is in good hands, you know. I believe you will be able to change the culture and, you know, help our national team go to the next level. So good luck. Once again, thank you so much, Coach T. Free. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for the convo, man. It's it's, it's good. I love it, man. uh, Keep doing what you're doing. Shout out Rocky. Repost, subscribe, all that. Do do, do numbers, okay, on his page. Yes, sir. I appreciate you guys as well for the support. Um, Don't forget, follow him. On Instagram. T Free 20. Yes, sir. Don't be rude. Coming soon. Yes. Man, wait for that cloning line to come, man, to be, to be released. It's going to be a hot one, man. So, once again, good luck with our national team. Um, yeah, man, we're all excited, man, to see like our national team probably in like three, four, five years. You yeah, know? stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay soon. Yes, sir. So, once again, thank you guys for watching. And yeah, we'll see you guys again next video. Peace out, everybody.